everybody so as promised in my previous video um, if you haven't seen that go take a look it's about a half hour chat about wing not wings and what they were all about and basically uh, the options you've got if you want to build one you may have heard a lot of people talk about them and you may want to have a go and um, with this kit it proves you don't have to spend a lot of money to do it and uh, you can really enjoy yourself while you're doing it so this is the Meng 132nd scale Fokker DR1 uh, triplane. Uh, DR1 stood for dry, which is three in German, as you know. And when Wingnut Wings um, were going to release this, they were going to release two versions. There was the Fokker F1 and then the DR1. And there are very slight differences, and I believe you can build both from this kit. So you can see on here, it's uh, it's, a, it's it's only for users above 14 and only, so it's not a beginner's kit. Uh, you're going to need to get some paint and everything for it. Um, cockpit interior engine construction are completely replicated obviously the model features accurate exteriors and eye-catching paint scheme um, accurate wing structure realistic fabric covering as all wing nut wing kits do um, exquisite PE cooling jackets and sights are provided to replicate the complete aircraft's machine guns three build options are provided F1 there you go you do get an F1 DR1 early and DR1 late versions now I know for a fact that um, wing nut wings were going to re release two different ones so um, We'll have to look at what you can do. And ailerons and rudder can be installed in selected angles. If you're not a rivet counter and you're not fussed about the differences between an F1 and a DR1 and everything, there's nothing here that's going to bother you. Um, if you are, I believe it's all in the box. So, um, looking around the box, it's uh, Quet, it's QS002, it's Quet, Quetzal, Quetzal Coatless. Quetzal it's a Quetzal with no coat on in the summer, QS002. Um, so basically, story behind this, uh, there were lots of rumours about Wingnut Wings working with Meng and everything, and that is not true. Um, what it was, Wingnut Wings was working with one of their usual tool designers, uh, or tool manufacturers, should I say, and they were close to having this completed at the time the company shut their doors. Somehow then, Meng... Wingnut Wings and the tool manufacturer managed to come to an agreement and Meng ended up getting the tooling for this and the 124th scale kit and, um, and then Meng released them and the only reason I've got this is because the kit was it's like 57 or 59.99 or something you can also get it with a 10th scale bust of, um, of uh, what's his name <laughs> uh, Manfred von Richthofen, that's it. I always want to call him Alfred. Manfred von Richthofen. You can get a bust of him as well with this kit. But this is actually the, the bargain basement version. And as I say, if you're in the UK, as of today, which is the 13th of the 9th, 2023, uh, this is available on Amazon UK for £36, which is a bargain. We can be kind of glad that Wingnut Wings didn't produce it on the money side of things because if they had produced it, yes, it would have had wonderful instructions. Yes, it would have had wonderful decals and the research would have been done and the kit would have been absolutely finalised. What you've got in here is not actually perfected tooling, which we'll go more into in a second. But um, basically what we've got here is a Wingnut Wing kit in a box for 36 quid. If Wingnut Wings had released this before they'd gone bust, um, basically this kit would now be fetching about £150 so be thankful in a way that it isn't so <laughs> there we go looking around the box you can see we've got these bloody Meng paint call outs which I, uh, I don't agree are always correct um, if you remember on my chieftain there's that Meng brown they call out which is like a rusty red brown it's completely the wrong colour uh, so we've got Fokker DR1 of Lieutenant Walter Gosch uh, yeah or Gosch that is uh, yesterday 19 February 1918 um, and at the end of the box we've got more there and then we've got some wording about the aircraft there you can read it if you want to freeze frame you can read that got some information about the kit um, and then we've got the, the bloody Red Baron if you like Red, uh, um, Manfred von Richthofen JG1 March 1918 so there we go so in the box, as you can see, what's very interesting with this, this is a Meng box, sorry, a, a, a Wing at Wings box. This is the Meng box, okay? And as you can see, the Meng box is slightly longer, but they're about the same width. So that's very interesting because Meng always made their sprues 
to suit the size of their box. And as you can see here, this one is a little bit loose. Now, in my video about main, I talk, about wingnut wings, I talked about them having a standard sprue size for a standard box size. And I would just like to show you, this is actually, for those that don't believe, for some reason why you would not believe, I do not know. But for those that don't believe, this is actually a wingnut wings kit. Let me show you something quickly. This is the sprue from the main kit. This is a sprue from the wingnut wing kit. I lay them on top of each other. Look at that they are exactly the same size. Okay. Even down to if you look up in the corner, you can see that was this says sprue G 32038 Samson 2A2 Wingnut Wings 2011. This says A Men QS002. So you can see that that was going to be a wingnut wing skip. Plastic is slightly darker, obviously it's a men kit rather than a wingnut wings kit, so obviously it will be darker, it won't be exactly the same. So we can put that over there out of the way. Right. So let's get into here. So we've got individually bagged sprues, and um, you can see the detail on here is just exquisite. We'll have a look at these in a minute, we'll get them out of the bags. We've got two different propellers, we've got fuselage halves there, you can see fairly small aircraft. We've got one piece wings, so you've got one piece wings with all the stitching and everything on there, looking absolutely gorgeous. We've got some engine parts there, we've got two different fronts there, that's going to be DR1 and F1. We've got another sprue here, so I'm guessing this is going to be even more parts for the DR1 versus F1. We've got a little sprue of clear parts there, and we've got a bag here with instructions and everything. And then at the bottom here we've got decals. So get that over there out of the way. Put our decals out of the way. And we'll have a look in this bag. This is going to be a resealable bag. It looks like Meng have put a cardboard thing in here that they did with the Chieftain. Which kind of seems a bit of a, a gimmick or whatever, I don't know. Whatever you want to call it. But uh, we've got the instruction book there. And then we've got some information in Chinese, it looks like Russian. Do we have it in English? Yes. So this is all information about how the DR1 arrived and I'm guessing that's just going to say the same as it did on the side of the box. So uh, there you go. Um, and here we've got an instruction manual which is, yes it's very nice, it's Meng, it's all colour. Looks like more than half the manual is colour call -out. But uh, very nice indeed. Now, apparently, I am led to believe there are inaccuracies with these instructions um, with regard to the different versions. We'll just have a look here before we go forward in the colour call outs at the back. So we have here uh, March 1918. So that's a. Um, doesn't say it doesn't say if it's a DR1. It just says here aircraft of Manfred von Richthofen, JG1 Deutsche Luft, Luftstreitkraft, March 1918. It doesn't say if it's a DR1 or an F1. So there's straight away there's a mistake or something that should be in there. And there's uh, Werner Voss. I've actually got that kit in the Encore Models one, which is the Squadron Hobbies. And this is all the, the, the striped linen. Okay, so that's that is an F1. So that's September 1917, and then this one here is very pretty with the blue undersides, the white tail, and the striped linen. Um, and this is uh, Hermann Goring. He has to 27 Deutsche Luftkrafter, May 1918. And then we got this one here, which is aircraft of Lieutenant Walter Gotch, just 19 February 1918. I am sure on the box it said three versions. Three build options are provided. Oh, three build options are provided. There's obviously four different decal schemes. So there we go. And we got our paint callouts here and our main AK colours. And that's also very colourful. So let's have a look at the uh, instructions first of all. So as usual, we're starting off with our let's get rid of that light. 
we're starting off with our um, tools. We've got some cautions all about bits and pieces. Don't do not do this and don't do that. Um, and then we've got our four versions there. There are four options for the model as shown in the drawing. Please select one before assembly. Refer to paint scheme for details. So straight away you need to find out which one you'd want to do and then find out if it's an F1 or a DR1 and then you can do your references and see which is which. Which bits on, go on which aircraft. Um, there are holes to drill here in the sides of the fuselage and that is where the grab handles fit. I remember reading it in the book which I'm going to show you in a minute. I remember reading it in the book um, and the grab handles were going to be moulded on the fuselage and they're not. So that was another thing I read from um, in, the, in the Richards book. So here we're assembling the cockpit. We've got the harness going in there. So it looks like we've got a photo etch harness going in. Um, and then we've got the seat going in with the seat cushion in the bottom. They're giving us all these colours. So A16 for B and D. So if you're doing versions B or D, you use A16. I assume if you're not, do, not doing B and D, you don't use it. I guess that's what they mean. It would be nice to be <laughs> told a bit more detail. Um, so there we are putting the seat belts in, or the harness, whatever you want to call it. And then we're going to come down and fit the control column, rudder pedals. There's something else going on there. We've got a little decal there for a compass or whatever that is. And then we've got the side panels going on to the um, fuselage. Now if this was wing nut wings now, they would be going into how to actually rig the, the sides of the um, fuselage and everything. There would be cables in here. Um, so do some references and I'll uh, and, um, and go from there. And as you see here, they're telling you to drill these holes. So A, C and D have the holes there and there. B has the holes through the forward. I remember Richard saying that after the F1, they move them back. I'll show you in a minute in the book. Um, so there we go. So A, C and D. So obviously that's a DR1, that's a DR1, that's a DR1 and that's an F1. So there we go. We've answered that one for you. So we've got to draw some holes in there and they're telling us to paint the inside of the fuselage. What colour are they telling us to paint it? They're not. I thought they were. And they're not. So there we go. Um, MC057. MC057 is leather one. No. No, don't follow these paint instructions. Um, because inside there, that is like a wooden section, and this here is all dope linen. So ignore these paint instructions. So we've got the fuselage halves going together, and then we've got this strip going on the bottom, which is a nice as a separate touch to show the stitching. And then you've got these grab handles here, F7, and as I say, they were going to be moulded on in the later position, and then they're not. Um, and then you cut them off and replace them for an earlier version. Uh, we've got like a fuel filler going in there. We've got the option of having a photo etch part or a plastic part. Again here, photo etch or plastic part. And again, they're not telling you which version is for which one. You're not, you need to do your references and see which is which. One's got a square cover, one's got a round cover. Um, here we have two different rudders. So this is for version B. So this is obviously the earlier rudder. And then these are the earlier tailplanes. And then we've got a gauge going on there. I assume that's a fuel gauge or something. And then we're going to start on the wings. If you choose to install part C3, drill a 0.8mm hole. C3 and C4. I can't even see C3 and C4 on there. So there we go. <laughs> um, and then going over the page, we're going to fit the middle wing. And then we've got the lower wing going on. We've got these little skids going on here. And then coming over here, we've got machine gun assembly. So you're going to roll your brass on there. That's very easy to do and it makes it look really nice as well. And then you're going to attach your machine guns. And we've got some bullets to go in the sides there. It looks like that's bullets. Can we display separately or placed at will? So you've got a little uh, flare gun there as well. Or it might be a pistol, but I'm assuming it's a flare gun. And same over here as well. And then we're going over the page. We've got a airspeed indicator by looking at there. Or is that some sort of pump that's operated by air? Um, and then we've got some more gauges going in here, which is all very nice. Ailerons going on to the upper wing surface. And then we're adding in our wheels. We've got little clips there so you can have turning wheels if you want to. And then you're going to build up the engine, which is going to be very, very nice indeed. 
and then we're going to add the undercarriage, add the supports for the tail planes, choose which propeller you're going to use, choose which front cover you're going to use. You've got three of them there by the look of it. And then here's our color, our, our sprue callouts. So we've got some photo etch stuff there. Uh, we've got our decal sheet there. And we've got our parts there. You can see there's not a hell of a lot to it. It's a very, very simple little kit. And then as we looked at just now, we've got our color callouts. We've got all the different colors and everything on there. As I say, ignore these color callouts. So looking at the decals, or ignore the colors they tell you. Do some research and find the correct colors. So looking at the decals here, we have a Meng decal sheet. This is not a Wing Nut Wings decal sheet. So Meng have done their own. It's not like a carryover. It's the same as the border models. It's like all, all that's Wing Nut Wings is the plastic. There's no Wing Nut Wings um, photo etch or decals or anything. That, that kit's missing a lot of photo etch that would have been in there. Had we not wings released, I can just tell from the design of the kit. So on here on the photo, actually, we have our cooling jackets for our guns. We have those those um, oil or fuel fillers, whatever they are. You have gun sights, and then we have these little these little parts here go around where the cables come out for the uh, control surfaces, and then we've got a harness there. So it's all very nice. I want to build this. I'll show you how to roll them, and we'll solder them on, and it'll come out absolutely gorgeous. And then here we have our decal sheet which it looks very nice. I have something on there. I have a, I have a hair on the decal sheet. So that's interesting. So you've got all our crosses on here. We've got all our instruments on here. And there we go. 2020 Meng made in China. Now I just want to, while I've got the decal sheet out, I just want to cover something. Many moons ago, this came up on eBay. And this is the Albatross D5. Manfred von Richthofen and somebody obviously bought this kit and not used the decals and with this kit if you bought this kit this is the Albatross D5 obviously it's nothing like the Fokker DR1 but if you go to the back of the instructions ta -da, there is our Fokker DR1 Man Manfred von Richthofen March the 18th, 27th of March 18 to 6th of April 18 okay so which option does that cover in here? Time-wise, I don't think it does. Because the only red one is this one, which just says 19, oh, it says March 1918. So that's probably incorrect. So if you want to build an accurate um, aircraft of that period, you can with these decals. So let's have a look and see how they compare. Now this, as I said, I got on eBay a long time ago. I think it'd be about £10 for it. I think these days it would fetch a lot more than that. So, oh, come here, they have no nails. So you can have a look at the, the decals and see the sizes and everything. So we can see here, ignore everything above this line, because all of this is for the albatross. So, you can see here, these decals are pre-aged, weathered, whatever, pre-ruined, scratched. I'm sure that's how they're supposed to be. Yes, you can see on here, they're all pre-scratched and ruined and everything, so they're not damaged. So um, you're not getting that on the main decals. But... You can see we don't have the option of any white squared crosses, but then they don't include this option in the kit. But you can see these crosses here, the white border on the wingnut wings is a lot thicker than the um, than the Meng. Um, and also the DR writing is a lot bigger. Um, so yeah, I mean, other than the fact that they've got this white border looks a bit thin, I think the Meng decals look absolutely fine. And if you want to do one of the versions in the Meng box, I don't think these decals would be correct for it anyway. So, so there we go. So that's a look at the decals. Now let's have a look at some plastic. All right, so um, going through the sprues, I'm just going to go as they come out. 
and we've got staple bags, yuck, so I'm going to cut the ends of the bags off rather than mess around getting the staples out because I hate them. Um, so very small sprue here, some very very fine moulding and on here we have, this is what we have a lot of on the Lancaster, we have some beautiful raised detail on this cowling as you can see here. All around there, let's get the light a bit better for you, there we go. So we have some beautiful raised detail on there, raised riveting. But what they've done, rather than slide mould, what they've done, they've brought the bottom of the tool up and the top of the tool, or the left and right hand of the tool, and each has, has moulded half a rivet. So you've got a seam line in between. So you just got to go around and just scrape that away. Um, and here we've got there's, there's a very slight texture to the plastic. It's very nice indeed. This is the sort of centre aerofoil in the um, in the undercarriage. And then this is a lever, I believe, that goes in the left-hand side of the cockpit. And it does very much look like this is going to be um, variant specific. We'll have a look at the book in a minute and it will probably tell us that this sprue is for a certain version, which is what Meng haven't done. They've given us the ABCD thing, but we, they haven't told us what version A, B, C or D are. Uh, we've got a little clear parts here, no point in getting this out, but we've got what looks like a little gun sight there, a bit there. Looks like it might be fairly generic. So uh, there we go. Another small sprue here and another two cowlings. So uh, this is going to be cowling city. So here you can see we've got the tail plane there and the ribbing on there is absolutely gorgeous very very nice indeed and we've got some very fine little raised posts there which are the control arms now the tires have continental printed on them and they're not molded in halves so you don't have a seam to worry about you can see on there we have the continental molded on there which is very nice again we have all the rivet detailing on here Again on the front you can see this one has no support across the bottom, this one has the support. And um, again, you know, thoughtful wing nut wings to protect those bits, they've put these extra bits on the sprue so they probably won't get damaged. And there's those grab handles that were going to be moulded onto the, onto the fuselage. You can see we've got a very slight texture to this plastic, it's nothing like the Airfix Hellcat. It's a very, very slight texture which is going to be great for holding the paint. And um, and again, you can see no two halves to put together, very thin trailing edges on here. And uh, yeah, absolutely wonderful. And it's nice to see, fair play to Ming, they've actually got the quality good. It's not all full of sink marks. Um, they've obviously kept their curing times up there, which is fine. Yet yeah, they might have to charge another couple of quid for the model, but what would you rather? A load of sink marks or pay an extra two pound for your model? Is in this day and age, you probably have to pay an extra two pounds for your model and get extra sink marks. <laughs> um, so, this is a nice little sprue. This is uh, the engine, um, typical wing nut wings, very, very fine detail, beautifully detailed. And as you can see here, combination of parts. So, we've got the ignition ring, we've got the intakes, and we've got the push rods all on one part rather than having loads of separate pieces. And then we've got our, our cylinder heads there. And you can see the detail on them is just gorgeous. Yeah, for, for 30 odd quid, this is an absolute bloody bargain. I don't quite understand what's going on there. We've got two of those. And one of those. Ah, okay, we've got different gear covers. So again, early, late. Very nice indeed. Remember guys, with these, the actual crankshaft was fixed to the aircraft and the engine and the prop together spun around. So it's not a ro ro radial engine, it's actually a rotary engine I think it's called. It actually, the whole engine spins around. So uh, amazing, amazing how they didn't get the oil all sort of just holding on the outside. So, get this cut open. This is one of our bigger sprues, the first of our two big sprues. So, this is going to be our main wings and our main fuselage halves. 
And this, I believe, is where Meng had a problem with all this getting broken off. And it looks like they've cured that with an extra sprue attachment. And this protective piece here, they've got a protective rib moulded in there. So that's all good. I can't remember what the old ones were like, but um, this is where they used to break. We've got a pretty hefty mould seam lines here. Wow. But again, no shrinkage, no sink marks, no ejector pin marks. We've got some pretty big raised ejector pin marks in here, but I don't think they're going to affect anything. Um, there's ejector pin marks under here. Again, I don't think you're going to see them because this is basically where the pilot sits here. But as you can see, it's not a big aircraft at all, so it's easy. If you're into 30 second scale and you don't have loads of room, you know, World War One is your thing because they're not very big. Unless you go and get a gun to G4, which is absolutely huge. But, um, and if you've got £950 to spend. But as you can see, the wings are made in one piece. There's no two halves to put together, but there's a pretty hefty seam line on there. And you can see even on this one, there's like a like a bit of flash on there. But you know, hey ho. Quick swipe with the sand and stick, that'll be gone in no time. Just look at the texture. And I don't know if you're gonna pick it up on the camera, but we've got the stitching on there as well, the ribbing. Or the, the screws or whatever on the rib on the ribbing. Absolutely stunning. So yeah, very, very impressive kit. And as I say, at £36, a bargain. I'm going to look at, today as I say, is uh, Wednesday the 13th of September 2023. I'm going to look on Amazon in the morning, Amazon UK. And if there's any left, I'm going to be amazed. If you guys don't go and buy these at 36 quid. Even if you're not interested in the subject, just the experience of putting together wing nut wings plastic. And here's the best sprue of all. This is this has got all the detail on it. So we've got here tail planes. So I'm not sure what the difference is in that one and that one. Not sure at all, but there is a difference there. Yes, that one's got different ends on it. Look, you can see the different shape on the ends. This one's got bigger elevators. Um, so we've got another set of wheels here. We had a set of wheels here, and these are continental. And these wheels appear to be, yeah, they are, they're bigger. So wingnut wings would really go into town. So it looks like that maybe you were gonna buy the early and you would get this sprue perhaps. And then if you bought the later, you'd get the kit with this sprue and not that one. Um, don't, count, don't count me on that, it could be the way it went though. But we can see on here the moulding is absolutely gorgeous. As I was saying in my other video, the thing with that wings, they were never big on slide moulding, they were never big on, you know, gimmick. Having, I, I saw a kit the other day and it had flashing LEDs in the gun barrel and stuff, in a 30 fiscal tank, or what, four. Um, but they were, you know, they gave you a nice, solid, well-moulded, well-produced, thoughtfully designed kit. And I mean, here we've got, I mean, this is a perfect example. You've got this area here. There's a mold, um, an ejector tab. There's an ejector tab. There's an ejector tab there. Well, now that's, um, what's that for is when the plastic rushes in, Rather than have it meet in the middle, it continues to flow into that area there. So you get a nice weld instead of a cold front there. Um, and you've got this piece here, which is thoughtfully made, quite thick, so it supports the part so it doesn't get broken when it's in the when it's in the bag in transit. You can see just how fine some of these parts are. We're extremely careful getting these parts off. But you know, when you look at the detail on that bulkhead there. It's just exquisite. It's beautiful. Look at the stitching. You know, you paint that and weather it, it's just going to look so real. You've got the floor there. You've got the seat, seat cushion. And then we've got another one of those. This is the centre fairing where the wheels go. We had one over here. So you can see this one is a slightly different shape. It's got less cord to it. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. Rudder pedals and control column there. Some struts, some small detail here. Very, very nice indeed. I remember seeing something in the book about cutting the ends off of these parts here and using them for something else. And then there's the stitching there, which is very nice indeed. So yeah, absolutely beautiful. As you can see, I think on there that it's got moulded on, it's got DR1. And on this one, it's got moulded on F1. Awesome. <laughs> So yeah, very, very nice indeed. Below this video, I will put a link to some reference images that are still available on the Wingnut Wing site. So, on the, so you can go and have a look at those and download the pictures and whatever if you're going to build one of these. But um, those machine guns. So you've got machine guns with moulded on cooling jackets. Again, one piece, no halves. And then you've got the machine guns without the moulded on cooling jackets. So you can use the PE ones. How lovely is that? And believe me, these Wingnut Wings guns using their rolled cooling jackets, they are gorgeous. So there we go. So that's the kit. Um, and as I think I've already mentioned, for a 36 quid, I mean, for £57 is reasonable when you think, you know, people are paying over £100 for a Sopworth Camel. Um, you know, from Wingnut Wings, yes, you haven't got the fantastic Wingnut Wings instructions, but, you know, it's just at the end of the day, this is, uh, the, the Wingnut Wings sock with camel is not worth, as a kit, it is not worth £100 more than this. It is worth more than £100 more than this because it's collectible and it's not going to be produced, but... You know, as a kit goes, by its what it is. So this book, um, and if you didn't see my review earlier about Wing at Wings instructions and what I was saying, the difference with this and Meng, you know, this is what I'm talking about. You're looking in here, look at all the reference pictures. There's real photographs of the aircraft. There's all your rigging guide and everything. Um, you know, it's just beautifully done. And they're explaining what everything is. This is a Teves and Braun radiator. This is a Daimler Mercedes radiator. You know, you've got your different wheels and different tyres. Building up your engine bulkheads and everything there. You know, the rigging on the inside. Remember I mentioned that? Wingnut Wings would have you putting all your rigging in. So there's the all the rigging for the control columns. Absolutely stunning. And um, that's what we would have got had Wingnut Wings produced this kit. But as I say, it would have been... A lot more money. So, this book. Um, normally I would review books separately. And we've got very glossy pages, so I'm going to have to put this light over here. My God, this is glossy. So, basically this is um, Fokker F1 DR1 by Ray Rimmel with Richard Alexander. And as I mentioned earlier, Richard Alexander is uh, was the main man at Wingnut Wings. He was the managing director at Wingnut Wings. And he was sort of responsible for for everything. Um, the guy that actually designed this kit also designed the Qatari Spitfire. So, and there's reference to that in here. Um, there's a point in here where they asked if he could be available for a conversation. It's here. It's in here somewhere. There he is there. Uh, Darren Mildenhall. And um, Richard said that at the moment he's very busy working on something for him. So that could only have been the Qatari Spitfire. Um, unfortunately, Darren Mildenhoer is currently very, very busy designing a new model for me, so is unable to answer these questions himself. But I will try to remember the process as best I can. As I was saying again, research, research, and more research. So, uh, and, and it's just, this is a conversation um, between, between Ray and Richard Alexander. And... Um, first off, I must say, this is Richard Alexander, first off, I must say, I think the Meng 132nd Fokker DR1 is a very good model, which is only let down in a few areas. Additionally, we are probably very lucky indeed that they decided to release it at all. Having said that, 
Men deleted our DR1 lifting handles which we had moulded into the fuselage halves in the most common DR1 position in an effort to simplify assembly for less experienced modellers. This will explain the strange split lines on the undersides of the fuselage halves in that area that were required to capture the handles in place. Unfortunately they neglected to create a new DR1 drill locations on the inside of the fuselage retaining only the F1 drill holes. Fokker moved the lifting handles slightly further rearward and the first dozen and a half or so DR1 were built so luckily Sorry, after the first dozen and a so and a half or so were built, so luckily modellers can use the split line detail to help position the holes for the most common production DR wire handles. It looks to me as that as though that's been changed because there were definitely two hole positions there on this model marked on the instructions anyway. I didn't see them on the plastic. Um we were also going to have the DR1 tailplane cable outlet reinforcing details moulded on the sides of the fuselage because this was going to be the most common version models we're going to build. It would only have been builders of F1 that would shave these off and install the fiddly photo etch cable outlet reinforced photo etch in the F1 positions. Our rudder control horns were going to be cast into the rudders to simplify assembly for less experienced modellers and not separate parts as tools by Meng. They tooled a second less detailed and inaccurate tail skin B10 for some unknown reason. So I would suggest getting this book because there's a lot of information in here and it's there's also information about the other available kits and uh, it's very very nice indeed it covers 30 seconds it covers actually it covers um, See what scale that is. I believe that's 30 second scale. Um, this is a rolling kit, so that's 30 second scale. There's another, well, this is 30 second scale. This is rolling, so that's 30 second scale. That's the E Elm Core models, that's the one I've got, and that is also in 30 second scale. And no, I don't want to sell it. And that is, this is the Meng one over here. So, and then this is the Meng. Oh no, sorry, that's the, um, what's the Merit International 24 scale kit, and then here we've got the Meng 124 scale kit. So that has obviously been released as the Meng kit. Meng have released it in 24 scale as well. So, um, streaking onto the finish line, you can see here, um, frame A includes extended fuselage frame A27, undershield access panel through, and engine mounting A26. So they're talking in here about the different parts of the kit. And, and basically, um, if you want to build it, you know, what parts to use for what version you're using. And it goes into what they are and what they did and why they were changed and when they were changed and this, that and the other. You can see down here, we've got the typical wing nut wing style paint charts. So this is showing us all the different tam mix mixes of Tamiya paint. We've got the Meng paint in there and we've got the Humble paint in there. I wouldn't bother with the Meng paint, to be honest. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's your mixes for your Tamiya paint which is nice. Um, F1 pre-production folio, among the most discussed of all Fokker dry deckers and perhaps most at least understood. So you've got some proper wartime images here. So this is the summer of 17. Okay, so there's a model there, August 17. You can see the, the striped vinyl. That was where they, they doped it and it got all different colours and everything. And then here we're going into building the actual model what to delete, what to shave, what to paint, what to fill, whatever. You can see here, picture by picture, colour images of everything as the model goes. And there's an actual aircraft there crashed. So you can see it's telling you to remove those bits of sprue I was showing you just now. And then building up the fuselage. Again, here we are. This is the bit that's missing. I'm telling you to do the rigging in the, in the cockpit. And there we go. So here's some more detail here about parts to remove if you're doing an early versus a late. And here you are, this is the dope, doping on the side. We've got rigging there, control cables coming out, or is that just arrows? I can't see. But um, we've got rigging there. And then we're making up some bits and pieces for the fuselage, painting up the wings. Here you go, painting up the wings using um, decals. These are um, these are decals to actually imitate the, the striping of the um, of the actual application of the dope. Okay, and then we're finishing the model off. 
And then here we are doing the cooling jackets. Building up the engine. No doubt they're going to be adding some wiring, I'm sure. Going to add some detail to the engine. No, we're not by the look of it. Looks like the wires may have been um, on the back or something. And then here we've got uh, aviatic.co.uk. There's a wooden shed there. Building up the shed. Putting a broken propeller on the back for a display. There's the shed interior there. You can see they're beautiful. Um, very nice indeed. And then recreating a legend. Um, and this is talking about the kit now. This is all with Richard Alexander, I believe. Yes, it is. At least they can see the two versions there. That was going to be the box artwork from Meng. And then here's all about a real aircraft. And then Droy Decor number one, Fokker DR1, October 17. Again, genuine photographs. And here we can see Road and Revisited Fokker. Um, Ray Rimmel takes this opportunity to back engineer his original WS review model with the addition of several carefully selected aftermarket parts and decals. So it looks like this is a Roden build. Or is it? I'm not sure. But you can see here some lovely schemes you can build from your model. That one there, I believe, is in the box. Yes, it is. That one is on the side of the box. So that one there is in the main kit. If I do that one. Uh, phase one departure. So there it is on a on a train trolley. <laughs> That's very nice indeed. Here's the real pictures of them being manoeuvred around. And as you can see, just going through, there's another version now. This is the, the actual Red Baron aircraft. It's bit by bit, piece by piece, all going together. And we've got some folios here. And there we are. There's another version there on the back. So absolutely, I think, a real necessity for this as a, a to go alongside that, that kit. Um, it's not the cheapest book in the world. It was about £28, which was a bit of a shock to me. But I thought as I got the kit so cheap, it would be rather tight to not buy this book. And as I say, I've also got the, um, the Encore Models kit. So... I couldn't find this anywhere and I actually went to um, there. I'll put a link in the comments down below if I forget, remind me. Winsockdatafilespecials.co.uk and got it direct from then. It was £28 and it was, um, I think it was £2.50 postage and it came in a, in a jiffy bag which wasn't the best. It came in a plastic bag in a jiffy bag but I'd have thought it had a cardboard insert in there or something. But anyway, um, it got here, it wasn't damaged, it's not dog-eared at all. And uh, yeah, so lucky I've checked my new postman's coming on, because my old postman used to fold everything in half. He would have done that and shoved it through the letterbox. It's a new postman now and he's brilliant. So um, it's a very, very good book. And I think if you want to build one of these, you know, get one. And I think if you stuck it on eBay when you're finished, you probably get 20, back, 20 quid back for it. So um, there we go. So that has been the review of this little beauty here. Lovely little kit. Absolute bargain. It's not going to be around forever. Go get yourself one. I think it's um, really, really worth the money. It's, it's, it's really worth 36 quid, blind me. Especially in this day and age. You think, I mean, that is like £6 more than a 132nd scale Revell Spitfire Mark II. And that is a rubbish kit, to be honest. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'll see you all soon, and bye for now.